Thanks for joining us for an instructional video on how to use the Bible study presentation from Experience Israel Now that we call Closer Than You'd Think. This Bible study is going to explore something called the Decapolis. Now, there's a lot of background information available for you. I hope you've downloaded the support material because it'll help you gain confidence as you go through this particular Bible study. We're going to go first of all to the Sea of Galilee and let people enjoy some of the sights there. And one of the things we want to remember is that Jesus moved to the Sea of Galilee. He, was, he grew up in Nazareth. He spent a lot of time there, but eventually the people you know, kind of threw him out of town, and so he left, and he moved to Capernaum. This is the south end of the Sea of Galilee. He moved up to the north end, but this is really only a lake. It's 12 and a half miles long, about seven miles wide at its widest, but it's not shaped in a, in a perfect round shape, so at some places it's always very close. In fact, if you'll notice in the video, and maybe even should point it out, you can always see the opposite shoreline from wherever you are on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. It's just a lake, and actually a small lake at that. We're going to kind of swing around and see the largest city that's on the Sea of Galilee, which is Tiberias, and there are a couple of things to to kind of watch far there, a couple of little extra teaching points. For one thing, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, a city on a hill cannot be hidden. A city on a hill can't be hidden. I want you to notice how Tiberias is a city positioned on a hill. It's very large. At night, with the fires and the lamps, it must have been the visual point of, of the entire lake. Everyone knew where Tiberias was. It's the major city of the area. Now there's some more video coming up of, uh, of the Sea of Galilee and you can, as you, as you present, make your presentation, you can either just enjoy the video or I would always be reading scripture, taking them somewhere closer to where I would like to be or laying down some background while they're watching the video background. Um, from, from Tiberias, we are going to move over toward Capernaum and we're going to find the road that Jesus used to get to Capernaum. It's almost a sure thing. Um, when people walk from point A to point B, they don't usually beat around the bush. They take the shortest path. And that would have gone through what is called the Valley of the Doves between two giant cliffs, the one on the right being Arbel. Um, and out in the plain uh, would be the, the plain around Capernaum. This is the Galilee region, of course. And this is some of the most beautiful farmland you, you shall ever see. And from the top of our bell, you can get a fabulous view of the entire lake, the Sea of Galilee, and that northern region around the corner of Capernaum where about 80% of the recorded ministry of Jesus took place. So this is a very, very important location. This was home for Jesus. You, you get places like Mag Magdala, where, where Mary was from, and over around the corner, Bethsaida, some of the disciples would come from there. But Capernaum is the place where we're going Today, Capernaum was a very conservative religious community. Um, people went to synagogue. People listened to what the rabbis had to say. They didn't break the rules. Their children didn't break the rules. It was a very strict, stern place. This was one of the most conservative areas in the Galilee, and Jesus intentionally chose this as his home. Um, the ruins of Capernaum show that indeed it was a, a small community, a village, a poor community. It was a fishing village. Um, the one thing that is there is the synagogue. It is just the, the ruins of the synagogue are absolutely fabulous. Now the columns and the building we see now that stand there so magnificently are, would, would come from the synagogue that was built after the old synagogue had been torn down for whatever reason, perhaps an earthquake, the one Jesus had known. But the foundation of that earthquake, uh, the foundation of that synagogue remains to this day and that's where this synagogue, the synagogue ruins that we see would be. Now oftentimes Jesus taught in places like this, right along the shoreline. Maybe he pulled a little boat out into the water and would teach the people. And he told them all kinds of stories. Remember the day that he told the story of a man who had two sons? One of his sons was faithful and worked hard out in the fields, the older, but the younger one had a rebellious spirit and he asked for his inheritance early, which was unheard of. It was scandalous to do such a thing. And he took all of that money, all of those resources, and he squandered them on wild living. And he did so in what, whatever translation of the Bible you read, might say a distant country, a far country, um, a, a place that was far away. 
But the title of this Bible study is that it's closer than you'd think. The wrong place is always closer than you think it is. It's so easy to get into trouble. Let me flesh it out for you. If you, if you leave Capernaum and you just take a, a nice view of the aerial surroundings, you're going to see something that's very, very important. When Alexander the Great came in to this area a long time before Jesus lived, he planted several cities that would carry on the Greek ideals, the Greek philosophy, the Greek lifestyle. There were ten of them planted originally in this area, and so they were called the Decapolis. They weren't very far away from Capernaum. In fact, one of them was just across the lake called Hippus, about eight miles away. Another one, Beit Shan, was on the very road that goes to Jerusalem. All of the people who lived in Capernaum had seen, at least from a distance, one of the cities of the Decapolis. If they had done any traveling at all, if they had gone to Jerusalem for one of the holidays, they had seen some of the cities of the Decapolis, at least out there on the hill. They may not have gone inside because what's on the inside, whew, it's really wrong if you're going to be following the Word of God. Um, but make sure your people see, even Damascus is uh, one of the cities of the, of the Decapolis, and they're all over this area. They were integrated into the area. Uh, Alexander the Great inviting people to come be a part of the lifestyle. He didn't force them. He just invited them in, and it was very, very tempting to give it a shot. If, if there really had been, and perhaps there was, Jesus was telling a story, but a lot of his stories were based on true events. If there really had been a, a son of a man who got some money and wanted to go spend it in wild living, he could have hired a boat. He could have walked around if he wanted to save his money, and he could have been in the arms of a prostitute by nightfall. Hippos was one of those Greek cities. It has the Greek theater. It has uh, uh, the Greek streets, the Greek columns, the Greek architect. The ruins can be visited there today. To, to see another location that has a much more, it's, it's been much more excavated, uh, we're going to go to Beit Shan. And so, just take one more quick look at Capernaum and realize that, that people would have traveled to Jerusalem um, and they would have gone right by this city. People from Nazareth would have gone by this city even more so from people from, than people from Capernaum. And the ruins of Beit Shan are incredible. It's one, of the most, it's one of the most unspeakable archaeological sites you'll ever find in any part of the world. It's just amazing what has been found there. It was Greek through and through. And of course, when the Romans came through, they just capitalized on it. Now, everything that you would find in this city, from a spiritual standpoint, from a philosophical standpoint, from an ethical standpoint, in a sense, it's like this. Whatever the Bible says is wrong, this city will say is right. Whatever the Bible says is forbidden, this city celebrates. Whatever, whatever is done here, would never be done in a place like Capernaum or a, a place where people were trying to live by God's rules and God's ways. And the rabbis warned their people not to come close to it. They, they said, in our, in our language, maybe we would have said, that's another world, you just don't even want to go there. Of course, it's not really another world, it's just another city. They called places like this the far country, a distant country. Um, when Jesus tells a parable about those two sons and people heard that he went to a, a far country to squander his wealth, they might have even turned to look at the horizon to see the nearest one of those cities. They weren't very far away at all. What an application point to remind people that it's, it's never very far to the wrong place. It's, it's never, it's, it's just so easy and you can get to the wrong place so quickly. In fact, if you're impressed by how fast a, a boy could have gotten to a place like Beit Shan or Hippos, you ought to see the internet. You want to see how fast somebody can get to the wrong place, today we've done a great job of it, haven't we? Well, there are other lessons perhaps you can bring out in this story, um, but don't leave your people there. Because here's the deal. This boy in the story found his way home. And as quickly as he got to the wrong place, he got back to the right place. 
It, it didn't take an enormous amount of effort. It just took that first step to come back home. And the father was waiting on him. The story is about grace. I'd like to end this particular Bible study with, a, with all of those reminders and then perhaps to lay out um, how Jesus made a way for all of us to come home. And, and for that, sometimes we'll throw in a picture of Gordon's Calvary, which is a, a hill that looks like a skull in Jerusalem. This may or may not be the place where Jesus died. There's another location that um, most people believe is the place where Jesus died. But this is a place where we can remember that Jesus did die for our sins. And he invites us to come home. The very one who told the story of the prodigal is the one who invites us to leave the wrong place and to come home. Because believe it or not, grace is also closer than you'd think.